On day one, I spawn in as a tiger. This is awesome. I'm gonna love trying out my tiger powers. Pouncing on fish, climbing up trees, and exploring temples. Who knows what mysteries await for me in this exciting world. I have to stay on my toes, though, and be super cautious. I only have five hearts. I realized I wasn't alone. It was a bunch of wolves. I was a little scared, but I asked if they wanted to be my first friends. They just laughed at me and started attacking me. I was too weak to fight back, so I ran. When I'm stronger, though, I'll be back to show them. I realized I needed some tools to defend myself. So I got to work chopping down some trees. I used the wood to craft some basic items and weapons. It wasn't much, but it would help for now. I realized that I was getting pretty hungry. It was then I found out that I had another power. An amazing sense of smell. Delicious! I followed the scent to a nearby village. I figured the villagers wouldn't mind if I borrowed a fish or two, right? It was then a villager saw me. I tried to talk to him, but he just freaked out and he sent an iron golem after me. I knew I wasn't strong enough, not by a long shot. So I grabbed as much fish as I could and booked it out of there. I'll make it up to you guys later, I promise. Now that my belly was full, I started thinking about survival. What if those wolves came back? I got to work. I found an area that looked perfect for a future base. I upgraded my tools with the stone I found, which helped me dig way faster. I used some stone to get a furnace up and going, and even snagged more wood to build a few chests. And my first base was finished. Before bed, I decided to stock up on some fish. Luckily, the ocean was nearby, and with my cat-like reflexes, I was done fishing in no time. I took my catch back to my base and turned in for my first night. Day two, I woke up to a huge explosion. I ran outside to find a bunch of creepers attacking my base. I managed to fight them off, but they still managed to explode. All my hard work. If only I had some friends. I was tired of being alone anyway. There has to be more tigers like me out there in the world. I had to figure that out. I grabbed some food to keep my strength up and I went out to find some other tigers. I traveled across the plains until I came across a deep and forbidding jungle. I focused and I could hear what sounded like another tiger. I ran over to see if I can find them. It looked like a mother and her cub. I was about to introduce myself when I heard something else. Something big. It was heading this way. It was the meanest pillager I'd ever seen. He looked really intense and he looked like he was about to hurt the mother and cub. Suddenly, he shot them and a huge explosion went off. Her and her cub fell asleep. I couldn't just stand by and let this happen. I confronted the mean pillager. Hey, what do you think you're doing to those tigers? Well, well, well. Haven't seen you around here, little cub. You'll make a fine addition to my collection. Collection? My name's the Keeper. I hunt animals, big and small. Nothing can withstand my sleeping darts. No, you're a monster. Animals are meant to roam free, not be captured and stuffed in a cage. Heh, <laughs> tough talk for a puny cub. I'll look forward to taking you out. Runt. The keeper fired his arrows at me. I used my speed and size to cut through the jungle, losing him, but also losing the mother and her cub. I felt bad. Don't worry, guys. I won't let him get away with this. Luckily, I made it back to my base. Careful that he didn't follow me. I was so mad. I'd finally found some other tigers and I didn't even get to say hello. I realized that I needed to be more cautious if I was gonna face that keeper guy again. I worked late into the night, mining more iron to make my base that much stronger. I fortified the walls and even built myself some armor from the leftovers. I felt much better. Day three started out with my stomach being almost empty. I'd worked so hard on my base that I'd forgotten to go fishing. With the keeper roaming around, every time I left my base, I was in danger of running into him. I needed to grow my own food, so I started planting and building a farm. It's not as good as fresh fish, but it will keep me alive at least. I was almost done with my awesome new farm when I realized that I needed more things to plant here. I decided to risk it and snuck off towards that village from earlier. I wasn't too scared of that iron golem this time. I managed to evade him through speed and I grabbed some potatoes. These will do. I was heading out of the village without a scratch when all of a sudden I felt a sharp pain in my neck. Oh no. It was a tranquilizer dart. I started to feel sleepy and my heart started to disappear. I tried to run but I couldn't. Thought you could outrun me, Runt? <laughs> what have you done? That's my strongest poison. You'll be unconscious in no time. Everything went to black and I fell asleep. I awoke on day four super dizzy, but otherwise unhurt. Where am I? I looked around. I'm in a cage and I wasn't alone. There were other tigers in here too. I was so excited to finally meet them, even if we were locked up. One of the tigers came up to me and introduced herself. I asked her where we were and what was going on. We're in a zoo? I looked around and saw a bunch of other tigers in here. This is horrible. We have to get out of here. 
I promised the tigers that I would be back. They have my word. This keeper must be stopped. I saw the small hole, hoping that I can fit. And I could. Freedom. I had to get out of here. I said goodbye and I ran. Thank you guys. I promise I'll come back and free you all. I ran as fast as I could out of the zoo. Lucky that I didn't run into that keeper guy. Once I got outside though, I realized I had no clue where I was. What biome is this? I didn't have time to think though. I just had to trust my instincts. As night fell, I realized I'd been running all day. I was tired and I needed shelter. I found a small hole in the ground and cleaned it out, making it a small den to spend the night in. It's nowhere near as comfortable as my other base, but it'll do. As night fell, I tried to get some sleep. I just couldn't stop thinking about my fellow animals. Trapped in that monster's zoo. If only I was stronger, then I could save them all. I woke up early on day five, anxious to start finding my home base. I hadn't gone too far outside when I heard what sounded like a fight. I ran towards it and I saw one of those mean wolves from earlier attacking a little cat. I jumped in and saved him, scaring the wolf off with our combined power. Thanks for your help out there, friend. Although I'm pretty sure I was gonna beat him. My name's Mr. Banks. What's yours? I'm Fozo. Pleased to meet you. Anyway, what are you doing out here alone? I could ask you the same thing. A little short for a tiger, aren't you? Yeah, it's because I'm a cub. And besides, I escaped from that zoo back there. I'm trying to find my way back to my base. Base, huh? I saw one of those a ways back. Figured it was empty. Lots of tasty fish in those chests, though. Mwah. Well, at least they didn't go to waste. Can you lead me there? I'll let you live there with me if you'd like. You can have all the fish you want in the world. All the fish in the world? Ho, ho, ho. Sounds awesome. I'm sick of hunting for my own food anyways. All right, follow me. Mr. Binks led me a short way through the woods, and before long, we found my old base. But, oh no, it was overrun by mobs. Luckily, Mr. Binks and I were able to clear them out and get to work repairing the base. The damage wasn't too bad, meaning my earlier upgrades had been a smart idea, but I could still improve and make it even better. I reinforced the walls, put in more furnaces and chests. I even went out of my way to build a new structure, an entire house for Mr. Binks. All this is mine? Ho, ho, ho. Thank you, Fozo. This is amazing. No biggie, Mr. Binks. I'm just happy to have a friend finally. Yeah, well, what are you going to do with all this extra space, huh? I'm going to travel throughout all the biomes, looking for animals who want to escape that awful keeper guy and bring them back here. This will be the greatest tiger sanctuary ever. Eh, just make sure they don't treat me like a snack, all right? On day six, I woke up in my own bed again, which was fantastic. I felt refreshed and ready to hunt. I left Mr. Binks to keep working on the base while I went out to get some more fish. I was at my usual spot, getting a bunch of fish with my paw when I heard something coming. Oh no, I think it's the keeper. But wait, it, it wasn't. It was a huge brown bear. I tried to get the bear to leave, but he wouldn't listen to me. And he attacked me. I attacked the bear back, using everything I had to defend my catch. A lucky Pounce was able to bring it down. Glad I practiced. It was defeated. I went to go collect my fish, but all of a sudden, what's going on? I started to feel stronger. My whole body grew. I have 10 hearts now, and I'm an adult tiger. I ran back to Mr. Binks to tell him what happened and drop off the fish. He was shocked, and he suggested that I use my newfound strength to look for any other lost tigers. That's a great idea. More friends saved from the keeper zoo. I thanked Mr. Binks and headed off. As night fell, I made it to the snow biome. I wasn't sure if there'd be any tigers around here, but before I could look, a soul vulture came out of nowhere and got me. I was weak, down on my last heart. I could maybe get one attack in before I was toast, but before I could make my last stand, a snow leopard came out of nowhere and took the vulture out. You should be more careful out there. It's a rough place for tigers who've lost their way. Thank you for saving me, but does that mean that you've seen others like me? I'm looking for more tigers to live in my sanctuary. A sanctuary, you say? How no noble. Yes, I've seen quite a few of your kind, not in the snow, but at a distant tiger temple in the jungle. A whole temple for tigers? Sweet. I asked the leopard where it was. What will you give me in return? Well, hey, you saved me. You can live in my sanctuary. You're more than welcome. Eh, I'm good. I prefer my solitude. From your base, head south into the heart of the jungle. Follow your nose and you can't miss it. I thanked the snow leopard anyway, and I headed back to base. I arrived home on day seven to a horrible noise. It was those wolves again, attacking Mr. Bean. Mr. Binks is on top of his home, taunting them. Oh, yeah? Come up here and say that to my face, you loser. I said that was enough. If you want to live in my sanctuary, you have to all get along. When I stepped in, the wolves got scared, and they ran away. I had to tell Mr. Binks to stop bullying the wolves. He might get hurt. Nah, dude, I totally had those guys. I told Mr. Binks about the Tiger Temple, and he said he'd heard legends of it, too. He's always wanted to see it and asked to come along. I said, of course. We'll need to upgrade our gear, though. So we spent an hour gathering the materials needed for a sweet set of armor for me and Mr. Binks. Now that we are both fully armed and ready 
ready to go, we set off on our quest to find the hidden tiger temple. We arrived at the edge of the jungle in record time. We were about to head in when we saw a pillager attacking a tiger. I was able to get the drop on him, defeating him and saving the tiger. The tiger was so grateful, especially after I told him about the sanctuary I was building. He promised to meet me there and left, but not before giving me what looked like a golden piece of melon. I guess it was meant as a thank you. Who knows? Maybe it'll come in handy later. On day eight, we were traveling through the jungle trying to find the tiger temple. We searched high and low, but the forest was so thick we couldn't even see. It was a great surprise when Mr. Binks found this. A stone tiger. It looks like a monument of some kind. Maybe it's a sign. We followed the direction it was facing until we heard what sounded like a thousand of wings. It was a village, completely overrun with parrots. They were everywhere, eating all the farmer's food, breaking the windows, and hurting the villagers. I was about to ask them to stop when a villager called us over from the nearby library. We ran inside, thanking him for helping us. I was furious. How can an animal rat out his fellow animal friends? Well, I'm here to stop the keeper. But first, I need to find that tiger temple. Do you know where it is? He handed me a map to the tiger temple and an invisibility potion for me and Mr. Binks. We'll need it to hide from the birds. I thanked him and we both drank the potion, turning invisible. This is so cool, but it's only temporary. We have to go. We took our leave from the nice villager and escaped the town, following the map. Day nine, we were so close. We'd been traveling all night and we were exhausted. As we drew near to the map marker, we heard noises. It was a pillager. What are they doing so deep in this jungle? And it looked like he'd shot another tiger. These guys just didn't know when to quit. I jumped down and scared the pillager away. At least they're all cowards. The tiger was dizzy, but able to stand. He thanked us for saving him and asked why we were there. I told him about our quests and he looked happy. The tiger king is only a day's walk away. He can show us. We hadn't even been traveling for an hour when a parrot swooped down from the trees, calling out to the pillagers. I tried to attack it, but it was too fast. Even Mr. Binks couldn't reach it. We thanked the tiger. I was tired of always running, but I knew if I wanted to defeat the keeper, I would have to keep going for everyone's sake. We ran for what felt like miles before we decided to turn in for the night. I hunted some nearby chickens for food and Mr. Binks found a good place for us to sleep. We turned in early, excited for what tomorrow would bring. Day 10, we were at the tiger temple. It was super imposing, but I wasn't scared. We looked around for a way in and found a huge passageway. I went in first with Mr. Binks behind me. We did it just in case if it were a trap. I better not become tiger food, Fozo. A tiger walked up to us and welcomed us to it. A refuge for all tigers. It used to be, at least. I asked him if he was talking about the pillagers, but the tiger told us to speak with his king. He'd know more than anyone. We walked through the corridors and we finally found the king's room. He was massive. He was scared at first, but he was very kind. We told him about our sanctuary. Ah, a new place for tigers to live without fear? Truly a noble quest, young Fozo. I came all the way here to ask you to join me. The keeper is out of control, and together, I know we can stop him. Hmm, indeed. His men are raiding this temple every day. We'll take you up on your offer, Fozo. You have an ally with the King of Tigers. The King offered us food and a place to sleep. We had a long journey ahead of us tomorrow, but I had made an important alliance. Days 11 and 12 saw us heading home with our new Tiger friends. After a long walk, we helped them get settled in, expanding our base, and making sure that everyone had a place for themselves. I got to work on a new, even bigger farm to make sure everyone could be fed, but that wasn't all. To honor our new friends, I decided I wanted to build an awesome new Tiger head. As I was looking for resources for it, though, I heard someone cry out for help. I ran over to the hill to find a sheep had fallen in a super deep hole. It was stuck and weak from hunger. I told it it too can come and live at my sanctuary. It didn't trust me at first, but after I told it that my sanctuary had a rule of peace, the sheep was convinced. Awesome. Now we all have wool that we can use. I got to work dying and shearing the sheep for my tiger head. I then decided to actually start building it. Days 13 to 15 started off strangely. I was working on my base when I heard that the Tiger King was missing. I dropped everything and headed out to the plains to look for him. I hadn't gone far before I saw him, and he was fighting the Keeper. So the great Tiger King reveals himself at last. I've been looking forward to this. You've brought nothing but terror to my people. This revenge will be more than sweet. I yelled at him to stop, but it was too late. The Tiger King fought valiantly, but he was no match for the poison. He collapsed. I ran towards them, but the Keeper just laugh and he shot at me. The arrow almost killed me. So I knew that I had to run away before I too was done for. I needed a better plan. The next few days, 16 through 18, we set off to avenge the Tiger King, keeping an eye out for any pillager ambushes. We were passing across the hills when Mr. Bink stepped on a snake. It attacked him before I could stop it, doing some serious damage. I was able to defeat the snake and give Mr. Bink some food for his heart, but we were running out of supplies in time if we were ever going to go save the Tiger King. The whole day passed and we were about to give up hope when we saw the gate to what looked like a zoo. We got 
to the entrance and we looked inside. And as we looked around, we noticed it was empty. There was no one here. Just rows of empty cages. Just then, the snow leopard appeared. He told us that he'd been keeping track of the keeper for days and wanted to burst his zoo open. But by the time he found it, keeper had packed up and moved out. I offered snow leopard another spot at our sanctuary. This time, he accepted. About time, dude. Together, we vowed to put a stop to this. Whenever keeper would show himself again, we'd be ready. We returned to the base on days 19 through 20, excited to have a snow leopard on our side. We built him his own little area in the sanctuary, a huge snow tower, and we made sure to put snow everywhere so he would stay cool. I was so proud of what I was building, but I couldn't rest yet. I put the finishing touches on the entrance. It looked better than I'd ever imagined. I knew my friends are going to love it. I went and fetched Mr. Binks, but I couldn't find him. Nobody in the sanctuary knew where he was either. One of the tigers thought they saw him heading towards the village, so I went that way. I wasn't thrilled about it, knowing the keeper was out, but if Mr. Binks was in trouble, I had to go help. I reached the village on day 21, making sure to stay low so no one saw me. I couldn't smell him, but I could hear him. I found Mr. Binks trapped inside a villager's hut. I asked him what he was doing here. Well, I was trying to find a way to counter the keeper's poison. I knew that some of the pillagers lived here, so I went looking around. I asked him how I could help him out. He looked like he was stuck on the floor. I heard this village had some supplies for potions, but as I was looting it, player came by and took everything. He sat me down. I haven't been able to get up since. I knew I had to go find this player to save Mr. Binks. I also need to get these potion supplies. If Mr. Binks was right, if we got this, we would be unstoppable. I didn't like leaving him here, but I agreed and went out to find this player's house. On days 22 to 24, I found what I thought looked like the house he described. The main entry was open, and there were a bunch of chests inside. Score. I searched through them and found a diamond set of tools. There was also a glass bottle, a blaze rod, and nether wart. These must be the ingredients Mr. Binks was talking about. I took it and was about to run when a player came home. He yelled at me to leave and try to shoot me. He shot me a couple times, but I was able to get to him and I knocked the arrows right out of his hand. He begged me not to eat him. I agreed if he released Mr. Binks. We went back to my friend. The player agreed and he sat Mr. Binks back up. I told him to never come back again, but as I was telling him, Mr. Binks started attacking him. He was so scared. He left everything behind and just ran. I was happy to have Mr. Binks back, but he had even more interesting news to share. If we mixed the glass bottle, the nether wart, and the melon from the tiger king, it would create a potion of healing. We decided to use the blaze rod and some stone from our mine to create a brewing table. I hope this works. We put the ingredients in and yes, a potion of healing. This would counteract the keeper's poison, but we only had one. I hoped it would be enough. Days 25 to 28 started with me on patrol. I knew keeper was out there and didn't feel comfortable not knowing exactly where he was. I heard a noise. Someone was in trouble. I ran over and saw a baby fox being chased by a pillager. Get away from him, you bully. The pillager ran away, but the baby fox was injured. I had to welcome this guy to our base. I told him exactly where it'd be so he can go and be safe. He thanked me, but he also told me something shocking. This couldn't stand. I had to leave the baby fox, but I knew he was safe. I had to go free these foxes and find their treasure. Days 29 to 32, I set out to save the foxes. I prowled across the land, hunting for those pesky pillagers. It took some time, but I was eventually able to find them. They were tormenting those poor foxes. Leave them alone, you cowards. I fought a couple off. One more roar, and the remaining pillagers just ran. The foxes thanked me. No problem, little guys. I invited them back to our sanctuary, and in return, they told me where to find the treasure. I found the cave that the fox has told me about. Wow, look at all these chests. I raided the place and found a ton of fantastic stuff. Blaze rods. Now we can make more of the brewing stations. And a heap of iron bars? These might come in handy later. I loaded the spoils in my inventory and took off. I made it back to my base and unloaded all the loot. I got to work setting up our brewing stations, but wish we'd had the proper ingredients to make more healing potions. Still, I realized we could at least make the bottles. I gathered sand from the beach and made a bunch of bottles. Better prepared than caught unaware. Days 33 and 35 saw us gathering more materials to make our sanctuary into an impenetrable fortress. I also continued working on my tiger head. It was coming out really good. Since this was no time to relax, I headed out to find more tigers. I knew that there had to be more out there somewhere. I decided to stay close to the base though, but it wasn't long until the wolves returned. I was going to show them who was boss, or at least I wanted to. Who is that? An elephant? The elephant took out the wolves. It used what it looked like magic, but how? Before I could talk to the elephant, it teleported away. But now it's a magic elephant? I'll definitely have to keep my eyes open for more of them in the future. On days 36 to 38, I realized that our base was running low on supplies. We needed stronger blocks, like diamonds. Luckily, Mr. Binks reminded me of that big mine we found all those days ago. There was diamonds in there for sure. I decided to set out and grab some. I reached it and began mining all I could carry. And with only a quick break to eat and to take a nap, I was fully loaded. My inventory was full. I was about to leave when I heard something. Oh no, it sounds like wings. Sure enough, a parrot was flying overhead. One of the keeper's spies. I was about to run, but then I thought to myself, wouldn't it be better to have a word 
with this little animal. I needed some way to trap him, though. Then I remembered the iron bars I took from the keeper's minions. Come on, just a little closer. And yes, I trapped the parrot. What do you know, parrot? Are you spying on me? No, no, never ever me a uh, spy. <laughs> sure you're not. Where's your boss, the keeper? What's he up to? Keeper's real close, all right? Real near. He's right over the hill. Big Zoo, please don't eat me. I won't eat you, but you have to promise you'll stop working for that creep. Shusha, sure, sure. uh, anything you like. I let the parrot go. I had my diamonds, but I needed to see what the keeper was up to. At least I still had my potion. I waited for the cover of night. On days 39 to 41, I snuck up to the keeper's base at midnight. It looked like a village that the keeper had taken over. But look at all the cages. There's so many tigers. This is inhumane. I knew I should go back and get some help. But just looking at my fellow tigers in all those cages upset me so much. I had to do something. I had to free them. I ran into the zoo, smashing every cage that I could see. Come on, guys. You're free. I always keep my promises. Just then, the pillagers attacked, shooting me with their sleeping darts. I began to feel the poison coursing through my body. My heart began to disappear, but I had my potion. I drank it, and immediately my hearts came back. Thanks, Mr. Binks. With my newfound strength, I was able to defeat the pillagers. The next day, I managed to gather all the tigers and lead them to safety, but I couldn't just leave that zoo standing. I had to make sure it never happened again. I found some TNT in the zoo. Perfect. I laid it all over the zoo and blew it up. Take that, keeper. <laughs> No problem, guys. But we shouldn't hang around here. Follow me to my sanctuary. There, you'll be safe. I promise. Days 42 to 44, we were so close to the sanctuary. Wait, is that smoke? My base was under attack. It was the keeper. No! I ran up to confront him. Keeper! How dare you? Ah, there you are, cub. Heard that explosion from here. Hope you had fun falling into my trap. <laughs> trap? While you were freeing those tigers, I led my men here. Thanks for getting all these beasts in one place, like fish in a barrel. <laughs> I've had enough of you, Keeper. I lashed out, fighting as hard as I could, but he was too strong. Each one of his darts drained almost all my heart. I was forced to retreat. I tried to help my fellow tigers, but, but I couldn't. I was too weak. I hated having to leave. But with what choice did I have? I thought I was alone. But then Mr. Binks arrived. He was wounded, but alive. I was so happy to see my best friend was okay. We decided we needed to rebuild together. But for now, we needed to find a safe place to sleep for the night. We crossed over a new biome. This one was super wet and rainy, but it was by the ocean. We built the first room of our sanctuary and went to bed. I woke up on days 45 to 47 and Mr. Binks being attacked. The wolves had followed us. I was in no mood. I pranced on the wolves, knocking them aside. I defeated them. We returned back to our home, destroyed. Still, we realized we needed to fortify our position. This can't happen again. The next days were all work. Our castle grew stronger and stronger. I vowed that no matter what the keeper threw at us in the future, this base will stand forever. And I finally put my efforts into finishing my tiger head. It turned out way better than I thought and it overlooked our entire sanctuary. Days 48 to 50 was when all of our buildings were starting to come together. I built a whole new sanctuary up in the castle walls, making sure that everyone would have everything they could ever want. I also ventured even further into our diamond mine and was able to come across a huge vein of it. I hauled it home to strengthen not just our build, but our armor as well. I'd like to see the darts break through this. The whole time I kept my eyes open for ingredients to make more healing potions, but nether wart proved difficult to find. One day, I'll have to travel there to the nether. At the start of days 51 to 53, I awoke to what I thought was a roar of a tiger. It was a trap. The pillagers were waiting for me. I guess I'm gonna have to fight my way out of this. Suddenly, there was a mighty blow. It was the elephant from earlier. He came out of nowhere and wrecked the pillager. I called out to the elephant to come back, but it ignored me and started running. I just couldn't let it go without saying thank you, so I followed it. Eventually, the elephant led me to what appeared to be an elephant village. There were so many of them. Is this guy following you? Hey, tiger, get out of here. I'm sorry. I just wanted to say thank you to the elephant. You guys saved me. You said your piece. Now move on. This is a secret village. You'll get the keeper after us if you're not careful. You guys know the keeper too? I'm trying to get stronger so I can take him down. Can you guys help? If you're trying to take him down, you need to talk to the old saber tooth. A saber tooth? They still exist? Where is he? I'll tell you if you help us first. We love cocoa beans, but they're too high for us to grab. If you climb up there and get them for us, we'll tell you where the saber tooth is. Of course. I'll be right back. Come find the elder elephant and meet us there. Days 54 to 56 saw me searching the jungle for the cocoa plants. They were so hard to find. I looked all around the jungle until, aha, found some. They were pretty high up but that's nothing to a tiger like me. I knocked a few down and was able to grab my spoils, but I realized that I upset a bunch of bees. Ah, it stings. I'm sorry, bees. I grabbed as many as I could and got out of there quickly. 
I returned to the elder elephant and gave him some cocoa beans. Oh, delicious. Thank you so much, young tiger. I was mistaken about you. You're welcome. Now, where can I find the saber tooth? Here's a map to this secret temple. He was worshipped by the people who used to live there in these lands. But be careful. The journey is a dangerous one. I'll be careful, I promise. Good luck, and if you're really going to take on the Keeper, please, if you see another elephant with him, please send her back. My wife, I miss her dearly. I thanked the elephant and took my leave. Being a tiger was awesome. You get to meet so many different creatures. Day 57 to 59, I was still no closer to the saber-toothed tiger. The map said I was close, but I was still super lost. I needed a second pair of eyes. I was getting hungry, so I looked around a waterfall for some fish, hoping to catch some. But the rocks were so loose, and I slipped. Luckily, there was a lake at the bottom. Unluckily, though, it was full of crocodiles. They attacked me, but I was able to swim away. Hey, I'm on land now. You guys need to chill. I forgave the crocodiles. They didn't do that much damage anyway. I offered them shelter at the new sanctuary. It's bigger and better than ever. You'll totally be safe there. The crocodiles agreed, and I helped them back to the base. Back to the sanctuary, I got them all settled in. I had a small lake and a river for them to protect our temple. It was all really coming along, but I still needed to find that saber-toothed tiger. Luckily, Mr. Binks volunteered to help out, and together, we set off on our quest. On days 60 to 62, Mr. Binks and I followed the map deep into a foreign biome. We hadn't gone far when we smelt it in the air. Evil. We snuck forward, and sure enough, we found another one of those keepers. For Zeus. We could see all of our friends trapped. Mr. Binks wanted to break them out now, but without any protection, I knew we didn't stand a chance. Our time will come soon, Mr. Binks. We turned to leave, but the Keeper was right behind us. Everywhere I go, I always seem to run into you. Keeper, you won't get away with this. Oh, I already have. You're no match for my new and improved poison. Keeper fired his bow. Luckily, he missed. Me and Mr. Binks booked it out of there before we could follow. We needed to focus on finding the saber tooth, and we kept following the map. We we traveled for days across many different biomes before we came across a river. It was moving pretty fast, but I knew it was no match for me. Come on, Mr. Binks. Mr. Binks hates water, but he didn't have a choice. Uh, oh no, the current is too strong. Mr. Binks was swept away. Uh, a little help here, please. Hang on, Mr. Binks. I chased him downstream, praying there wasn't a waterfall. Luckily, it ended in a lake. I was able to save him. Thanks, Fozo. You really saved me back there. But like always, I'm sure I would have figured it out. Classic Mr. Binks. On days 63 to 60, we found the entrance to the temple. We tried to open the door, but couldn't. It looks like we're gonna need a key. We looked around and found a super deep lake. What's that down at the bottom of the water? Is that? It is. It's a lever. I wasn't sure if I could make it all the way down there in one breath, but I had to try. I dove in and swam for what felt like minutes. I started to run out of oxygen. No, I can't give up. I flipped the lever and I started to swim back up, but all of a sudden, a shark attacked me. I had to go back up fast. I made it with barely any hearts to spare. The lever opened up a cave, but before we can explore thoroughly, I needed to get my hearts back. Mr. Bing? Some cooked fish, please. Thank you. We ate our meal and gathered our strength for the trials up ahead. On days 66 to 68, we headed into the cave. As we explored through it, we got overrun by spiders. They swarmed all over us. Get back! I let out a roar and scared them off. As the spiders ran, we noticed a small opening in the cave wall. It looked like it was made out of glass. Where are we? I took a swipe at the wall and it broke down. We walked through into what looked like a massive cave full of lava. But wait, what's that? There was a pedestal with a chest in the middle of it. That's probably where the key is. It has to be. Me and Mr. Binks walked through the cave, and we saw there was a way to get to it, but the platforms looked too small for me. I don't think I was able to make it to the chest. I got this, Fozo. Don't worry. Just relax. I was super worried for him, but I let Mr. Binks go ahead. Careful, buddy. He made it. Ha! Never doubt greatness, Fozo. Mr. Binks grabbed the key from the chest. Suddenly, the cave began to shake. Oh no, another trap. Hurry, Mr. Binks. Mr. Binks ran as fast as he could, but the platforms collapsed. He jumped and he made it on a platform he couldn't get back on. He was trapped. There had to be something I could do. There's no time, Fozo. Here, take the key and run. No, Mr. Binks, I can't leave you. Not after everything. Legends never die, Fozo. Just don't forget about me, okay? I caught the key and I ran. Barely escaping the cave before it all collapsed. No! 
brought Mr. Pinks. I couldn't believe it. He was gone. I spent the night building a small gravestone in honor of him. I won't forget you, Mr. Binks. We'll beat that keeper and I'll make your spirit proud. Days 69 to 71 saw me ready to meet with the saber-toothed tiger. I was nervous. They're supposed to be extinct, but I couldn't let Mr. Binks' sacrifice be in vain. I returned to the temple and put the key down. The door popped open. It looked like it spread dust everywhere. How old is this place? Oh, wow. This place looks ancient. I'd have seen a place like this in my entire life. I didn't have time to admire it, though, because out of nowhere, this huge saber-toothed tiger jumped down right in front of me. Who dares enter my domain? It's me, Fozo. I'm a tiger, and I was told by the elephants to seek you out. They said you can train me. Train a whelp like you? Don't make me laugh. You're not even worthy enough to stand in my presence. Have at you! The saber tooth pounced, but I was faster. I managed to get a swipe in. I know you felt that, saber tooth. Well, well, well. You have some moves, little cub. I may not be as strong as you, but I won't let you kick me out that easily. Ha 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 ha! Such spirit! You remind me of me all those years ago. Does that mean you'll train me now? What harm can it do, giving a cub his claws? <laughs> Very well. Meet me here tomorrow, and your training will begin. Eat of my bounty. It will give you the strength you need. I think the Sabertooth was about to take my leave, but he gave me a glistening melon. No way! Where did you get these? These are the gifts the villagers would lay at my feet. If you choose to be as strong as me, you will do well to eat your fill. I thanked him. I was ready to start listening to the Sabertooth's wisdom. Days 72 to 77 were a blur of training. We sparred back and forth, and my claws got razor sharp. We pounced on the top of the temple, and my leap got even stronger. But then, out of nowhere, he sent a mutant creeper after me. I'm not strong enough for this yet. Have faith in yourself, Cub. Let forth the might of the majestic tiger. I focused all of my strength into a single attack and let out a mighty roar. It defeated the mutant creeper in one hit. I didn't know I could even do that. That's amazing. The saber tooth joined me and together we practiced our roars well throughout the day, the night, you name it. We didn't stop. The keeper wouldn't stand a chance. On my last day of training, saber tooth sat me down. You have learned all I can teach you. Your roar can shake the stars from the sky. Thank you, Master Sabretooth. I won't forget how kind you've been to me. The natural world is out of balance. I can sense the Keeper's evil. Bring him down and restore nature to the way it's meant to be. You are no longer a cub, young one, but a full-fledged tiger lord. I thank the Sabretooth for everything he'd done. I could have stayed and trained forever, but I knew in my heart it was time for me to get back to my sanctuary. I took my leave of the wise Sabretooth, vowing to use my newfound power to defeat the Keeper once and for all. On days 78 to 80, I finally returned home. When I told them about Mr. B, everyone was bummed, but I couldn't let him be forgotten. With the help of the sheep, I died their rule and built a statue to honor our fallen hero, our friend. Mr. Binks, this upcoming victory is dedicated to you, old pal. On days 81 to 83, I finished my memorial and decided to put the melons the Sabretooth had given me to good use. I mixed it with the glass bottles we'd made, but realized we were still missing one thing, nether wart. I didn't like the idea of leaving the sanctuary again, but if we were to take down the keeper, we needed those potions. But first, I needed to find a portal. But where? Luckily, I had my friends at the sanctuary sanctuary to help me out. I didn't care. The final conflict was fast approaching, and I didn't have time to waste. I thanked the alligator for their help and set off. I found the beach that they told me about and jumped in. I knew cats hated water, but tigers don't. I started swimming. How far can it be anyway, right? I got this. I swam and swam for what felt like hours. Wait, what's that below me? Is that? It was a dolphin. I'm looking for the nether portal. Some crocodiles told me it was out here. With the help from the dolphin, I was at the portal in no time. Thanks, Mr. Dolphin. With that, I hopped into the portal. Netherwart, here I come. Days 84 to 86, I spent looking for Netherwart. I was constantly attacked by piglins, so I had to stay on my toes. But luckily, they scattered in the wake of my new roar. This new roar ability rocks. After a few small scuffles, I found a chest that had all the Netherwart I can carry. It also had some bonus Netherite. Score! I made my way back to the portal and hopped through. I'm glad to put the Nether behind me. It was a pillager in, in the sea? They were getting way too bold. One swipe finished them off though. Take that, coward. I really am stronger. The dolphin thanked me and carried me back to shore. 
Thanks again, Dolphin. With this nether wart, I'm feeling confident we can bust open that zoo and save our friends. I spent day 87 and 89 getting my forces ready. I handed out potions to all my animal friends, along with forging netherite armor and weapons. We also gathered a bunch more sand and some gunpowder from the nearby village to make more TNT. That zoo is going down. Finally, we were ready to march. Day 90 to 92 was the day of our big attack. We wasted no time in raiding the zoo, not letting any time to prepare. Their arrows came from all over. The poison was super strong, but our potions and armor were enough to counteract them, and we mowed them all down. Be free, fellow tigers. You guys get out of here. I'll take care of the keeper. The keeper arrived, and he looked stronger than ever. You've become quite the irritating little kitten. I've been training my whole life to take you down, keeper. You won't win. His poison was super strong. I used all of my potions and hit him with a powerful roar, knocking him back. Ah, what is that? It's my new power, you creep. See if you can handle another. I roared again, but the keeper suddenly disappeared. Where did he go? Uh, he was right behind me. Try this on for size. It's an arrow of explosion. He shot the arrow up. And when it hit the floor, it caused a huge explosion. The arrow hurt. I'm shocked it broke through my armor and strength. I was getting weaker. No, I was so close. Close call, cub. Now die. I had to run. I barely dodged his arrows of weakness. At least we got the animals out. You can't run forever, tiger. I was mad that I had to retreat. But when I saw all my friends and the animals we'd rescued, I knew we'd done some good today. Amongst the animals we'd saved was an elephant. Hey, I know who you are. I told her where her husband was. He was a great help. I was amazed. That's exactly what I would need to turn the tide. Day 93 to 95 saw me preparing for what would probably be my final adventure. I stocked up on fish, brewed some more potions, and repaired my armor. I said goodbye to the snow leopard and put him in charge of the base. I had no time to lose. If I was going to defeat the keeper while his zoo was destroyed, I had to act fast. I ran day and night, and the air got colder and colder. Luckily, my fur kept me warm, but there was a blizzard that came through. I decided to build myself a small hut for shelter. I was almost done building it when a polar bear came out of nowhere and started smashing it down. Hey man, what's going on? I swiped at the polar bear expecting a fight, but he backed off. A pillager? So they're all the way up here too? The wizard, that's who I'm looking for. I begged the polar bear to show me where the wizard lived. I don't care. I've got a keeper to defeat. On days 96 to 98, we traveled across the tundra, eventually coming to the wizard's palace. Wow, it was so epic. The polar bear wished me luck and left. She had her own cubs to look after. Thanks, polar bear. I headed towards the wizard's castle, but it wasn't long until I caught the scent of pillagers. They were already all over the sanctuary. No matter, they were no match for me. My roar was getting stronger every day. One was all I needed to send them packing. After I cleared them out, the wizard appeared. He'd been hiding. <laughs> Thank you for saving me, tiger. You're a long way from home, though. I told the wizard everything and begged him to teach me how to use the enchantment. Ah, the resistance enchantment. Yes, I could teach you. It's hard, but follow me. I'll show you. The wizard took me to a deep room within his lair. There, he brought out a magic book. Now hold still, tiger. This will take some concentration. I could feel it. The spell was working. Whoa, I felt so much stronger. My heart's increased to 15, and I was way bigger now. This was my final form. I knew it. I didn't have long to celebrate though because the snow leopard came running in. Fozo, I came as fast as I could. It's terrible. What happened? It's the keeper. He's attacking our base. We need your help now. I spent all day 99 traveling. I was kicking myself for leaving my base again. Keeper must have spied on me. I was exhausted by nightfall and didn't want to arrive to the battle with no energy. So I ate my food and dug a small den for a quick rest. As I slept, I had a dream. In my dream, I was standing in the middle of nowhere. Suddenly, I heard a familiar voice. Bozo, you made it. It was Mr. Binks. Mr. Binks, I miss you, buddy. But what are you doing here? What's going on? I came to tell you not to give up, man. Keeper will capture all the animals in every biome and keep them as his trophies. I'm just worried I won't be strong enough to defeat him. Remember everything we accomplished? Just you and me, a cat and a cub. There's nothing you can't do. You're right, Mr. Binks. I've got this. As long as you're a tenth as cool as I am, of course you do. Just then, I woke up. How long was I asleep for? No matter. Mr. Binks was right. This was my time to be the hero. 
Keeper, I'm coming for you. Day 100. The battle was already raging when I arrived. Pillagers were swarming the sanctuary walls. Luckily, the river and the crocodiles had helped. The tigers were charging the pillagers. I dove into battle, using my magic roar to send them flying and stopping them. Pillagers, stop this senseless attack. No one you're beaten. Some of the pillagers listened, throwing down their bows and running. I walked over to the snow leopard, and he told me that the keeper was at the heart of the base. I see him. He's wrecking our temple. It's time to end this. I walked up to the temple, confronting the keeper. Keeper! This is the last straw, tiger! Me and you. One on one! Let's go! Do your worst! The keeper shot an arrow of weakness, but it bounced right off! The enchantment! Yes! It worked! What? My arrow has no effect! No! How? It's over for you, keeper! I summoned all my strength, channeled it into my voice, and roared! No! I saw the keeper was defeated. We'd done it. And us animals could finally live in peace.